Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of Power Word Crit. I am Corin, and I am your dungeon master for today. With me are four fabulous players, and they are... Kayla playing Celestine. Ander playing Wesley. I'm Ashlyn playing Izzy. I'm David, and I'm playing Lord Usaka Von Pride. Sweet. And guys, we finished our first arc. It's so crazy. So... Welcome to Arc 2, everybody. Let's see what you guys do. But just to recap what we did last arc, four heroes came to Green Nest for different reasons. One came looking for a relative. One came looking for a best friend. One f looking for glory. And the other just kind of showed up with gore all over herself. <laughs> not really sure what she was doing, but she it was, was not for pretty. A bath. Her job. <laughs> yeah, she was looking for a bath. And then, unfortunately, that all went to uh, Avernus and Handbasket. And they were all attacked by the Cult of the Dragon. You managed to save some people. You saved a mill. And you managed to save, actually, a lot of people within the Ch Temple of Chantea. And you also met a new companion, because unfortunately one of them passed on during that fight. You also met a local who has tentatively joined your party due to a person who died coming to him in a dream. And our bath-searching war cleric battled the <laughs> champion and almost won. <laughs> so I mean, glad. I think she did win. Yeah, I, so I think you're selling herself short. She almost killed him. Let me and rephrase if he that. Didn't you run almost away like a him. pansy. <laughs> you're right. I apologize. That was my bad. Uh, you definitely won. I don't know. He might have gone down, and then all the wyverns would have attacked. So... That would have been an unfair duel. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's down. Only Cora knows what he would have done had he won. Mm -hmm. True. True. So, so now this just means that our party goal is to meet him again so that Celestine can kill him for real. <laughs> Round two. <laughs> Round two. Fight! <laughs> we'll just have to keep fighting him until you get a critical hit that just kills him. Oh, gosh. Yeah. Before but this he, is before he can run away. Have to kill him. <laughs> yeah, but this is Kayla. She crits. I, honestly, Kayla versus Corin. What did I expect? I mean, I roll terribly. She rolls quits up the wazoo. Unless it's initiative. Unless it's initiative, that is true. So, that being said, you guys are currently standing looking at Daybreak. And you see that parts of the town are on fire. You see parts of the town is destroyed. Uh, at night, you weren't entirely sure how much damage had been done. You didn't expect probably this much. There's people, there's lots of people behind you cramped, uh, crammed into this little keep. And they all just really want to go home and see what happened. What do you do? Uh, as, as one of those people, um, I want to go home and see what happened. <laughs> okay. Um, so uh, I, I believe last time we talked, uh, I managed to meet up with my father um, and... Uh, communicating with him and Governor Nighthill, um, relayed my my vision from Agmar Cree and Kurt that I was going to be that I needed to retrieve the Fang of Agmar Cree, um, a mythical artifact that my family had been declared stewards of such. So he's motivated to go do that, but also wants to like go home and check the shop and such. Also, he wants to go find his violin that got left out. Oh, that's right. Yeah. That's right. Oh, that yeah. could have gotten stolen, too. You, mm -hmm. ooh. Uh, how uh -oh. tiny was uh, it? It was well polished. It wasn't... Depends on if the torchlight hit, right? Yeah. Is it a golden violin? <laughs> no. <I'm... laughs> okay. Not well enough off for that. <laughs> and I don't, you don't have to be well off. You just have to win a certain, you know... Contest. <laughs> <laughs> when the devil came down to greenest. <laughs> <laughs> so, that being said, Wesley, um, you have a chance to go check out your house. Yeah, uh, I do so. And you are followed by lots of people. It's kind of chaotic. Yeah. Uh, most people are not 
really talking, and if they are, they're kind of talking in hushed tones. Everyone exa is exhausted, but they're just kind of overwhelmed by all of the devastation. So arriving at the uh, Eldritch Exchange, my parents' shop and home, um, how destroyed is it? Uh, on a scale of 1 to 20... <laughs> we do that. Don't roll a one. You don't. Say. It's a, it's about a sixteen. <laughs> oh, so Meaning only minor damage? No, that's massive dead. damage. Oh, <laughs> dang! Other, windows other way. Were, windows were broken. Uh, it looks like there was a little bit more than looting going on here. Um, you do see maybe some barrels of just knickknacks and stuff, tiny knickknacks. Mm -hmm. The floor is covered in trash. And it's it's a mess. Oh, this is this is really rough. Um, th this is also like you know, being the oldest. Like this was going to also be like my um, future inheritance. Future inheritance, just like that. I mean, I've got dreams of you one day becoming a great bard, but the reality in the back of my mind is like, really, it's gonna be here, um, kind of thing. And so this is really awful in thinking about my family and like our livelihood's gone. Yeah. Go ahead and roll to see if your violin is there. Right. If you roll above, we'll say if you roll above a 15, it's there. All right. Just a straight d20 roll. First roll of the night. Oh, it's so a not investigation? It's a 13. Oh, no. You look for quite a while just through the rubble and the devastation, you don't see it. It unfortunately looks like it was taken. Not surprised. Uh, after after searching for quite a bit, you hear just a loud, <gasps> an audible gasp, and you see your mother oh. standing there. She says, Wesley? Wesley! Mom! Is that you? We, I made it up to the keep. Where have you been? I... I I went up to the north. I went up to the northern farms uh, because it looked like they were coming from the south. And some families took me in and we hid in their basement. Was it Farmer Farmer Jamjar? Yes, it was Farmer Jamjar. <laughs> and his he six children. <laughs> <laughs> Hence why we call him them. Farmer Jamjar. <laughs> and his six children. <laughs> and there was lots of jam. That's how we got through the night. Oh. That's how we made it. Peach. Cherry, <laughs> my favorite is Razzle, but you know, that's You're very right, rare. Right. <laughs> Probably had to break out the good stuff there. We did. We didn't know how long we were going to survive. <laughs> I, I need to know if this farmer has named his kids after different, like, jams and jellies. I was waiting to hear like, that. Oh, surely. Like surely. <laughs> oh, yes, I, I definitely. I want to know if, you know, if this is an ongoing thing or is this the beginning? Will his child be Jamserson? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Son of Jamjar? Yes, yeah, son of Jamjar, right. <laughs> I'm writing down Farmer Jamjar and six yeah. kids. <laughs> Figure we might as well populate. Just you know. in case it comes up again. One has to be called Concord. <laughs> yes. The eldest is Concord. And then Peach. And Rasperin. And I don't remember the other three. They're too young. Marmalade. 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 Oh, no. Uh, pepperini. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> well, did you see what? One more? I'm already dying. <laughs> oh, and then for some reason, they, they oh. named the last one Nutella. I don't know why, but they did. That's... Yeah, I, I've never understood that. Neither have I. Oh, no. But I'm so glad you're safe. Isn't right. that from Absolutely. Om? <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. I, I saw Dad at the keep. What a, what about the others? Um, Fezzi and Vinny and Indy. I didn't see them up there. No, no, no. They, they're still they're still eating the jam. Oh, good. <laughs> you, know, you know they're growing boys. Yeah. Probably going to eat uh, Farmer Jam Jar out of his, his whole stash. But I, ca I came here to look for you and... And Max, he, you said he's in the keep. Father and I and Erica ma made it up to the keep. We went to the sanctuary and some, some heroes uh, came and, and were able to give, give us safe passage to the, to the, um, to the castle. Oh, that's, that's so wonderful. Um, did you... Ha have you been in our neighborhood? Have you seen... I, I only just got here now. Um, I haven't had a chance to check on anyone else. Okay. Um, her parents 
did not survive. I went to, that's where I went first, thinking you and, uh, you and Max were there, and I saw them, and they were gone. I have not seen her sister. I don't know where she is. Hmm. Well, I think we knew that already. You did, but yeah. she does not know I had you. forgotten. Yeah. Um, I, I'm sorry you had to see that. Um, she, she did tell me that earlier. Oh, um, poor girl. Yeah. She, she's strong, though. She, she, she seemed like she was doing okay. Good. Uh, I'm gonna. I'm. I'm gonna head to the keep. Are you? Are you gonna come with me? Um. Yes. I'll, um. Yeah. There's not much more we can do here. We might have to stay at Farmer Jam Jars <laughs> a little bit longer. Our home is not livable right now. Mm-hmm. Um. I. I think that's a very good idea. Um. I. I have something else that I need to do. Um. Father already knows, but. Um, I don't know if you've you've had a chance to look around uh, the shop, but mother, the the thing is gone. She just kind of looks at you and takes a step in, takes another step in, and she just wraps her arms around you and she says, "It doesn't matter. All that matters is that you're okay. We can get the thing back, but I can't get you back." And then. Uh, Sobs, sobs, crying. Like, I'm sorry, mother. Oh. It's okay, son. <laughs> Inconsolable. Yeah. By cut. Backstreet Boys. <laughs> <laughs> so, so at that point, uh, do you guys head back up yeah. to the keep? Okay. Uh, Izzy, Usarker, and Celestine, what are you guys doing? Uh, you saw Wesley just kind of walk away with an en masse group of people. So Izzy, after taking a moment to just kind of breathe and take in the destruction of the town and still worried about Jaden, she is going to remember the conversation that she had with Kurt. And at the thought of Kurt, she's also going to get more pensive. Um, But she's going to remember how he mentioned that he had a letter about... Jaden's ransom so she is going to go to Kurt's body and see if she can locate through his belongings that note and uh, see if she can find out any more information okay so you do a search in all of his pockets you don't quite see a note on him Uh, you do see some scraps of paper that maybe um, he was writing stuff down but you're not entirely sure what they are, but there's no ransom note. Okay. Um, I'm going to grab the random scraps of paper just in case. I'll have to find out what these random scraps of paper that were in my pocket. <laughs> you're going to have to tell me what they are. I just made it up on spot. Sure. <laughs> oh, shopping list. Ander. <laughs> yeah, shopping list. Kurt was an inspiring poet. Oh, yes. An aspiring poet he wasn't even aware of. <laughs> trees, trees, trees. <laughs> I love me some trees. <laughs> <laughs> I love to cut them, cut them down, build things out of them, look at them, walk through them, haul them, throw them. <laughs> trees. <laughs> okay. I love it. So you find that in his pocket. <laughs> Pretty sure that's not the ransom note. <laughs> Just a gut feeling. <laughs> not to think ill of the dead, but Kurt, you, you really weren't a poet. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so not finding a ransom note, I am probably just going to start walking at the town. Yeah, and at this point, you probably don't even know where he was staying because you know he, he didn't have all of his stuff on him. Right. So he dropped it off somewhere. So I'm just going to start wandering the town and see if I can find anyone who looks out of place that other than us was met, <laughs> right other than us that was supposed to meet Kurt or someone about Jaden and just see if I can randomly come across it I guess I'm going to I'm going to take a, a chance fate. I'm All going right. to pray to Timora <laughs> All right <laughs> So you pray to Taimora. Uh, go ahead and make a religion check. Okay. 
17. 17, Ooh. okay. Izzy, turn around. There he is. <laughs> <laughs> All right, in this, in this case, I'm going to need you to also do an investigation check with advantage because of that, okay. that wonderful role. Uh, and you're gonna do an airport sign, airport sign check. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Drop ransom here check. Oh my gosh. <laughs> All right, with advantage, that's seventeen. All right, so you you run a you run around town. Well, not probably not running. You're walking. Yeah, I'm around. tired. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you guys are yeah. At this point, you guys are all pushing on exhaustion. Um. You walk around town. You don't. Unfortunately, you don't find anybody who looks culty. You don't really find anyone who's waving around a sign saying drop off ransom here. You don't really everyone just looks devastated. You're there be dragon cultists. Not yeah. bound. Except I feel like they're Okay, left. not bound. <laughs> yeah. However, um as you pass uh so as you're walking around, I would say this you're walking around for about thirty minutes at this point. You're walking around town. It doesn't take that long to really get through town. You're dodging rubble and, you know, broken carts all over the place and fire still being put out. Uh, you stop in front of a building and you just get this feeling that Kurt was here. And you kind of hear a whisper, go upstairs. I'm going to follow that prompting and go to the upstairs. I'm assuming there's still an upstairs to this building. It wasn't completely destroyed. <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> a dragon. Upstairs, so you open the door and there's just nothing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well, well, the top of the upstairs is now downstairs. Yeah. Well, thanks, Tom Mora. <laughs> <laughs> go back <laughs> downstairs. It's the front of the house is fine, but the, the other half of the house is and not. Tom Mora is just like, ah, I got gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, Chaos goddess. <laughs> <laughs> so you you actually do walk in. You see that out of all of the buildings. This one, surprisingly, doesn't have as much damage. Um, however, you do notice that there were big claw marks in this building. So you think that when you were running towards the, the town, this was the building that the dragon landed on. Okay. So um, you do, there is an upstairs. Uh, of course, everything looks pretty ransacked at this point. Um, there's really no shiny things anywhere. Uh, so if anybody had left their gold or anything, it's gone. So, yeah. But you 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 kind of walk through the the rooms until you find a familiar plaid shirt. It was my spare. I only had one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you recognize this plaid shirt because this is one of Kurt's older plaid shirts, and he's it's one of his favorites. Is it spare? It was so. green. It was green, <laughs> yes. Is Kurt like sailors? He has a spare suit of clothing that he only wears when he's not dead. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that from Treasure Island. Oh. <laughs> only wear your spare suit when you're dead? Right. They, 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 you know, these sailors all had two sets of clothes, one that they wore and one that they didn't wear until they either got a new set or until they died, in which hmm. case they'd be buried in it. That's really interesting. Yeah. Nice. I don't know if that or anything, but that was in Treasure Island. <laughs> <laughs> huh. So yeah, you do see a familiar green plaid shirt. I walk into that room and look at the belongings that were left behind by Kurt. All right, so you, you look through the belongings. You find um, his shirt. You find another axe. Uh, a spare axe. And you also notice tucked away in one of the dressers, you do find some scraps of paper. Are these more poems? <laughs> yes, some of them are more poems. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Fir trees, pine trees, beaches too. <laughs> oh man, yes. everyone's going to turn into a poet now. <laughs> uh, th this one's log, 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 log. <laughs> oh no. Log, log, log. Praise log. <laughs> <laughs> okay. um, so uh, you look through them. It's more poetry. It's up for debate if they're good or not. <laughs> right. But you do find one that has many creases and looks like it was read multiple times. 
and it's folded. All right, I unfold it. This is the ransom note. Oh, hey. <laughs> you do find the ransom note. Can Is it in a language I can read? It's in common, yes. Okay. okay. It would be awkward. <laughs> that would be awkward. It's written in I train. found the ransom note. It's written in Elvish. <laughs> well, <laughs> shoot. Did Kurt speak Elvish? I don't think so. <laughs> oh, no. That would have been terrible. Oh, my goodness. Um, so what does the notes ransom note say? So the ransom note goes into detail about, you know, we've got your kid. We need this this amount of money on this date in this town. And it's, it's very to the point and the amount of money that they're asking for was a significant amount of money. Mm -hmm. We're talking like a hundred thousand gold coins. Wow. A significant amount of money. Man. That's um, a lot of, that is a lot. I mean Jaden's worth it. <laughs> but not nope. actually worth paying nope. that amount. I'm just saying he's worth that amount. Like oh, oh okay. To Izzy. In general. Yeah. To his In general. mother. <laughs> and to his to mother his and his family, you know. But not actually worth paying, you know, kidnappers that amount. Right. <laughs> so <laughs> they don't yeah. deserve any money. Whatever the conversion of a hundred thousand gold pieces is is in today's currency. I think that's that's like a lot. A million? Ten I million? think it's much more than that. <laughs> oh, let's find out. <laughs> <laughs> Quick Google search says sixty one million. Holy cow. Oh, ooh. 61 million. That's how they're, much they're, they're asking literally for. requesting 2,000 pounds of gold. Yes. <laughs> they may not have. Oh, the... oh, you know what happened? A kobold was in charge of writing the notes. Oh, no. <laughs> he just sat and was putting down zeros. <laughs> it's like, how much... I it's... mean, it's pretty good penmanship for kobold, but sh yeah. Like, hey, guys, what, what should I put for the ransom note? Uh, like, do like a hundred thousand gold. <laughs> I don't know how many zeros that is. Just, just keep writing. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, they were trying to write a hundred, and it kept going. <laughs> uh, I don't think you added enough zeros. <laughs> so yeah, in today's dollar, sixty-one million ish. Ish. <laughs> By the way, Izzy, what kind of kits do you have? Because uh, I know you have a jeweler's kit. Yes. Do you have anything else on you? No. Double checking. Okay. I have a mess kit. Okay. <laughs> and thieves tools. So you can make a mess. So you can <laughs> and a tinder box. <laughs> All right. So you can eat on this paper. <laughs> you can uh, open it up with your thieves tools and you can mm -hmm. also burn it. Okay. I don't <laughs> want to do any of those things. Yeah. None of those sound like good options no. here. Izzy, I'm going to need you to do an intelligence check since nothing really falls under this. Okay. 18. Ooh, 18. Tonight, guys. Okay. 18. I'd have beat a 20. <laughs> so you're reading this and you you're reading it multiple times and you're kind of blown away by the hundred thousand gold pieces. <laughs> I'd be lucky to ever see that accumulated amount in my lifetime. For reals. But as you as you kind of get over that shock, you realize that this handwriting is very, very familiar. Dun dun dun. That doesn't sound good. What? How do I recognize it? What? This is Jaden's own handwriting. Ah! <laughs> All right, Usurker and Celestine. He could have been writing under duress. You know? So, the sun is rising. I am tired, taking care to stay out of those blinding, painful rays. I cloak myself <laughs> in my black cape and descend into somewhere darker and more quiet. As you're Excuse walking... Excuse me, Governor, do you have any coffins? <laughs> <laughs> do you have any soil from Baldur's Gate? I need it immediately. <laughs> so as you're walking, uh, <laughs> go ahead and make a dexterity saving throw. Against what? A grave. <laughs> Raise the sun rays? <laughs> yes, against the sun rays. Outrun the sun. I got a... Passably average eight. Oh gosh. Okay, I'll so run the sun. Do, do, do. <laughs> <laughs> so as you're as you're walking, you hear 
Mr. Vampire! And you were slammed into oh, by a small child and you get knocked over as this kid wraps his arms around your legs. Uh, you made it! Did you save me with that lady? No. Oh. <laughs> do, you, do you need to go find some... The sun's out. Do you need to... Follow me! Follow me! And you should he, follow him. He's gonna take you someplace dark. He is. <laughs> <laughs> and he gra- he holds out his hand. Do you grab it? Um, no, but I do follow. <laughs> okay, Celestine, you see you circuit get uh, bowled over by a by a child, oh, no. and I'm is so starting sad. to be led away. <laughs> I'm just curious where he's the kid's taking him. I want to see where he's taking him. <laughs> I'm going to follow behind. So, Celestine, uh, you're, you're walking behind I'm just him. I'm following, being vastly entertained. I'll take the entertainment where I can get it. So this kid is just chattering about, you know, thank you so much, late Miss Lady, who's following us. Thank you for saving me. And he's still wearing that gray cloak. He doesn't look like that he was drugged like some of the others. Mm-hmm. Um, but he's like, yeah. And oh, no, he was and one of the captains. Oh. <laughs> he was yes. he was one of the captains. But now I'm spirits. wondering if maybe there is more to it than that. Mm. <laughs> he drove the cobalt mad. <laughs> <laughs> Selected <Italian>. for release. <laughs> <laughs> so as he's walking, uh, you see a a man come up, and he's like, "Kyle, Kyle, stop messing around with other people. We need to go home." He goes, "I know, Daddy. I know. Can they come with us?" Is this your small boy? This is my small boy, yes. (laughs) This is my son, Kyle. He has a vivid imagination. Oh? Yes. He's adorable, I say, as I I, try not to laugh at the whole thing. I'm just glad glad that Miss... uh, What what is your name? I'm so sorry. Oh, Miss Peace Child. Miss Peace Child here saved him. We, We were so scared. We had no idea where he was, and... Now he keeps running off, and would you guys like a place to stay? Our house out in the uh, up in the north is very um, it was not destroyed like the rest of this town. Is it full of jelly? This is Farmer Jam Jar. <laughs> I don't know. The son's name isn't Jam. Oh, his name is Kyle. Okay, they're neighbors. They're neighbors. <laughs> The neighbor. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> um, I'll it's, use Sarker, but I'm it, like... it would be an honor if you would stay with us. We, it's not that big, uh, but we have many pillows. <laughs> so, is does this, out of character? Does mm-hmm. this person recognize Celestine in any way, shape, and form? He does. Okay, so he is nice to her despite that. Yes, he doesn't look like a guard. He doesn't look. He just looks like a normal townsperson. Okay. Okay. So cool. what you're saying is he doesn't recognize the chapter she's from. Either he doesn't Correct. recognize or he doesn't care. Well, yeah, either either one. You're not entirely sure at this point. He just said that he would be honored to, to house you guys. W- would you stay with us? Both of you. I, I assume you two are... Um. Yes, I would... I am rather exhausted, I will admit. So uh, some... A nice place to rest would be uh, quite enjoyable. How far is this place of yours? Uh, it's about a it's about a 10, 15 minute walk. That's not bad. Well, I believe that our previous residence is probably burned to the ground. So. Not actually. Oh, <laughs> oh we probably should swing by the inn and pick up whatever was left. Hmm. Like. Bed rolls. Actually, I don't know if you. If came you will with give us rolls. directions to your place, roll. then we will see if we can make it there. Oh, of course, of course. Dances. And he says, "Just follow this road up until it ends. Keep going, Keep going until you hit a house. It's the one with the small windmill-looking thing on the sea on the roof." Ah, windmills, okay. my favorite. I say, I'm going to wander off towards the end. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna also head to the end because I have to pick up all my stuff, which uh, eh, some of that may not be there anymore. (laughs) Yep, so you guys make it to the inn. Uh, You're surprised. Again, it's not as damaged as you expected. You do see claw marks. Like, a couple of the corners are damaged, but the structure itself is fairly intact compared to some of these buildings that you've run into. Uh, You do go upstairs, 
And as you're walking, you see Izzy just staring at a note, something in her hands, a piece of paper. I'll recognize, I'm, do I see Kurt's shirt? You do see a plaid shirt. Okay. So um, I can probably put pieces together, maybe. Um, but we're going to assume that I at least can figure out that this was Kurt's room. I'm like, oh, Izzy, is he, is everything okay? Jaden wrote his own ransom note, and I have no idea what this means. I'm like, that seems a little odd. I don't. <laughs> Was Jaden literate? Yes, very, very Obvious. literate. Well, then there's an entirely likelihood that whoever kidnapped him wasn't, and so used him to write the note via enchantment. I'm going to uh, take, go to my room, and at this point, having said that, <laughs> and close all the blinds <laughs> and make everything extremely dark and go to sleep. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> this is just floor. She's like, that makes so much sense. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, as you two enter your room, anything that was shiny or mm. could burn no. is gone in your inventory yeah. that you left there. If you had like a bedroll, that's still there. Oh, good. Um, clothing Candle. is still there, but anything shiny. And if you had any um, money that you left behind, then that is also gone as well. Is the tinderbox gone? Uh, tinderbox would be gone, yes. Okay. Dang it, I lost my sensor. Yes, you definitely lost your sensor. That was probably pretty shiny. Yes. <laughs> so my candles are gone, my sensor's gone, and my tinderbox is gone. I'm going to have to find another tinderbox and a sensor. Uh, I see you can't a just... shopping trip in our future. Yes. Yeah, also, if you, you can't left. Just pick that up. Yeah, sorry. Also, if you left any weapons. So if there's any weapon you did not pull out during battle, it's also gone. Except for that spare axe in Kurt's yeah. room. Except for that axe in Kurt's room. So Izzy, as you as you look around, you actually notice that that axe is not there anymore. Yeah. What? You, What's with this magic axe? <laughs> so you hear a whisper in your voice, or in, 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 your, in your voice. I whisper to myself. <laughs> I go Hi. crazy. You may recognize this voice. Don't freak out too much. I'm just using your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, dear. so you, you actually hear a whisper uh, in your ear <laughs> that says, you would recognize that. And I led you here for that. And the voice disappears. And you can be certain that that was either the voice of Timora or like a spokesperson of Timora. Timora heard your prayer. Izzy is not a very religious person. She is a little terrified <laughs> by this experience. Um, Because... Like, she prays to the gods. She doesn't really expect them to answer. So the fact that Timora answered in such an obvious way, she's like, I I need to rethink my life choices, apparently. <laughs> um, so the letter is written in Jaden's hand. Yes. Does it mention a place to me and a time? It mentions a day. It mentions Green Nest. And it mentions noon. Okay. And it's still early morning right now. Yeah, it's like 6 a.m. Okay. Um, I am going to take the note, take all the other scraps of paper, even though Kurt wasn't the best poet. Maybe his family would appreciate it. <laughs> and i um, <laughs> going to also take his uh, spare plaid shirt going to wonder again what happened to that axe. I just shake my head and uh, walk out of the inn and see if I can find a place to just take a nap for a few hours before I go out at noon to see if I can find this person or if it was Jaden who wrote it, whether or not he was forced to under duress or well, what not. Um, but just see if I can get any more clues on what happened to him. And uh, if nothing comes out of that, then I am going to go find the other 
members that I formed a party with the night before. Okay. So as you're leaving, you see uh, a mirror that was broken. Mm -hmm. Uh, As you pass it, you notice just uh, glancing offhandedly that there's tears streaming down your face. I go to wipe my cheek. You don't feel anything. Um, I'm a little shaken by this, but I just attribute it to me being super tired and walk out and see if I can find like a home that isn't as torn up or whatever and see if I could convince someone to let me like sleep in their corner for a few hours and I'll pay them like a couple of silver pieces. Okay. As you pass Celestine, she mentions that there's a farmhouse that, or I guess you didn't say farmhouse, a house that is at 10, 15, mo- 10, 15 minute walk from here, and they've offered to give us some shelter. Oh, okay. But like, I can go with you if you'd like. I, I'm exhausted. I really need to take a nap. Do you need help carrying anything? I look around. I'm like, no, no, I'm good. <laughs> oh. Also, the tub is broken. <laughs> oh, at least no I got my bath. more tub oh, for hot man, baths. I'm all gross again. Weren't there multiple tubs? They're all broken. <laughs> 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 They're all conveniently broken, but the second uh, floor is fine. So yep. I, I yes. feel like the the kobolds were probably had a vendetta against bathing <laughs> instruments. Oh, definitely. How dare they clean themselves? Oh, no. These filthy humanoids. <laughs> So uh, yes. Usarker is in a pitch black room f- um, going to sleep. I'm going to leave him. If he didn't, he apparently wants to be in that room. I'm like, okay. I escaped the child again. Yeah, I it's consider true. You this did escape a, a victory. Child. <laughs> it's all right. He knows where you are. There are only a few places where you, he knows you know about. It's okay. He's durinal. I can just stay at night. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, right. That's what you think. <laughs> I think he was up all night too. So who knows what he is. All right, so as uh, Izzy and Celestine, you you walk past, you manage to make it to the house. You see that the house next door is giving out jars of jam. And, oh, that's uh, very sweet of them. Interesting. Uh, yeah, there, there's them. some people who've come up here. They know they know Farmer Jam Jar, and he's They're definitely he's definitely a uh, a food prepper, <laughs> and uh, he has a lot of jam storage. <laughs> Just preserves. The preserves. preserves. They're going to form a new militia called the Preservers. Yes. <laughs> so he's handing out jam to everybody uh, who's making their way up there. You see Wesley kind of walk in there. But beyond that, you guys are free to take your rest. Yes, yeah, sleep. <laughs> mm-hmm. So, yeah, I'm only going to sleep for uh, how many hours is that? Five hours till noon? So I'm not going to get a long mm-hmm. rest yet. Okay. Are you going to have Celestine come with you? Um, I'm going to let you know what's going on, but I'm going to say I don't know if someone's actually going to be there. So I'm going, I, I'm really more just going to check it out, try and be like stealthy mm-hmm. and like, well, if you want, I can stand down the street. <laughs> Way down and, the street. And if I need backup, I can call you? Exactly. Okay. Um, um, I may not me, be Miss... sneaky, but I can be down the street. Right. I- excuse me, Miss Is- 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 Isidore? Izzy? Isidore. You can call me Izzy, though. Izzy, yes. Um, y- I'm supposed to go with you all. Um, <laughs> yeah. and... Yes, Kurt told you in your dream. I remember. Yes. Um, and you-, you seem to be talking about something important to you. What- what's going on? Um, so the reason why Kurt and I were here before the cultists attacked, uh, we were supposed to meet someone about a ransom for, uh, his cousin and a friend of mine who is apparently abducted by the cultists. Mm. And they were supposed to meet today around noon. I don't know if anyone's actually going to show up as because of last night's events, but... I just, I can't risk not going and missing an opportunity to see if I can find out what happened or where Jaden is. That's the name of my 
friend, by the way. Oh, that I I, I gathered as much. Um, but I I will gladly lend lend my hand. Um, in addition to being a stellar musician, um, more notable to <laughs> and more useful to you probably is that I have a way with magic. He's probably sneakier than I am. <laughs> um, I will not say no to I, I, any I backup. Will, I will take that as a compliment. You should. As I'm walking, <laughs> clink, 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 clink. <laughs> I would not be opposed to any extra help. So if there's anything that you can do and are willing to be backup, like I won't say no to that. It's not until noon, so we still have a few hours. I'm, mm, I'm definitely going to take a little cat nap. Yeah, I think I think we all need a lot of rest. There's a, a lot of things went down last night. Yeah, um, it was. Yeah. Uh, I've never up. experienced that before in my life. I don't even know how to process it all. Mm. Yeah, well, say that was a meet, new experience for me too. Amazingly, meet back up at eleven ten something like that. Yeah, yeah, about eleven thirty. Okay. Pillows. <laughs> There's pillows. <laughs> all yep. the pillows. All they have the pillows. all the pillows. I'm going to feel a little bad because we are a little on the dirty side, but at the same time, pillows. Everybody's dirty. Everyone's dirty. Yeah. So five hours go by. You guys manage to wake up at 11. Um, you make your way down. That's probably Making not your way enough. downtown. I got my way. I can heal. <laughs> I can at least heal. Right. So it's what a short rest. It's short a rest? short rest. Short rest, yes. So that counts as short. Kayla, how tired is Celestine? Because she had that magical funky thing. Oh, that's true. But she also took a lot of damage. I also took a lot of damage. Right, but that just means you're in pain, not necessarily mm-hmm. sleepy. <laughs> I might be a little energized, or <gasps> it was like a monster drink. Ooh. Okay. The high has worn off. I you used. Even I used my second wind to basically heal up. Ah, uh, fighter. <laughs> yeah. Uh, if you want to consider this a short rest, we'll just call it an extended short rest. You can use hit die as you desire. Please. Yes, please. And uh, Usarker, you're sleeping. Mm-hmm. It's dark. <laughs> it's sunny outside. I have no reason to be out there in the blinding light. Mm-hmm. You really are a vampire. <laughs> I mean, I just spent all night awake. I, sh- I-, I deserve okay. some sleep. That's you know? true. <laughs> Izzy just has other pressing matters that she can't afford a full long rest yet. Yep. So you guys meet up, you make your way down down to the city. Did we meet up with you, Sarker? <laughs> no. Okay. Just... Did you, Sarker? I don't think <laughs> like, Sarker gave there's any There's a indication. do not disturb <laughs> sign on his door. Un- unless you guys feel de- the desperate need to ha- have him there. He's asleep. Nope. Okay. Izzy's gonna let him sleep. <laughs> I would hate to see you, Sarker, in a bad mood. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, you mean he has bad moods? <laughs> I Shrek, I assumed so. Mm. I thought I he assumed. just had one mood. <laughs> so as you, you guys, so mood. yeah. So as you guys make it into <laughs> town, you see that the guards are moving heavy rubble. Um, there are. It looks to be there are certain sections of people who were who were assigned certain things, moving rubble, clearing pathways. There's some guards who are shepherding people off to certain sections of the town that look to be less damaged than the others for places to sleep. And none of the guards look like they have taken a rest at all. They are just, they are just going, 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 because this is a disaster and they're trying to do the best they can with what they have. I commend them. I'll blend in and I'll ask if they would like some help moving rocks. Do you have your arm covered? Um, let's see. I probably spent a little bit of time before I went to sleep sewing my, or uh, sewing at least a little bit of my habit back together. Okay. That, uh, <laughs> um, you, you really need quick release. I know. Like I buttons need or something. Quick release and tear quick away habit. <laughs> you, know, you know, someday she's well, going mean, to get in, in contact with somebody great. in the entertainment business and they're going to have those, you know, tear away clothing. Oh, yeah. there we go. Woo. Tear away cloaks. So <laughs> we're going to go ahead habit. and say yes because <laughs> I also. I know the people know where I'm from. I know some of them are uncomfortable, but I don't feel the need to make them uncomfortable. Okay. So you walk up to some of the guards. And so they I have half a habit, probably. Half a habit. <laughs> Got it. 
Um, Maybe a cloak. I don't know. You're fan of a fan of the operaing this. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Phantom of the opera. <laughs> Sorry. So, you walk up to some of the guards, and none of them seem to really like. They know who you are, but they don't seem to recognize that you had some sort of patch on your shoulder. Um, and they're like, "Yeah, we will definitely take your help." Uh, and they hand you a few uh, very scribbled, very poorly written pieces of paper and saying, we're trying to get those in the East Wing area who have houses out there into the sanctuary. Um, we'd, we've run out of room in the keep. We're trying to get them into maybe the mill if possible. So just whoever you send into certain sections and he hands you a section for the sanctuary and um, another what looks to be kind of a smaller chapel. Mm -hmm. uh, it's kind of like a non-denominational. You can basically just walk in there and do whatever you need to do okay, and then walk yeah. out kind of a thing. Um, and they're like, we can only have a certain amount of people. As as they keep going, check them off and give them this piece of paper and that will let them in. Okay, is this... So this assignment would take me like 15, 10 minutes away from Isabel, right? No, so you're stationed on... Uh, right now at this point, you're stationed on the east side okay. and you're shepherding people to the west side. Okay, okay. So I'm just... So you're Cross assigning, guard. you're basically assigning people where they're going, okay, and cool. on another little, tiny little piece of paper, it's kind of like a permission slip, like yes, oh, I have okay. three, Got it. and you'll give, they'll give them to the, the area, okay, and saying I'm okay. supposed to stay here. It's like the best that Governor Night Hill could come up with short in notice, such yeah. short notice. Okay, so I'll so. go ahead and help move people around, um, help move rocks as necessary as well, but keep inside of Izzy. Okay. Yeah, you don't have to be too far away from okay, her. Okay, good. That's what I was worried about. No, 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 no. Wesley, what are you doing? Do we know where this is going to occur? Like where the ransom is supposed to take place? Just said greenest at noon. Hmm. Okay. I was going to see if I could find like a public square or something. Is there like a tavern nearby that people do like shady dealings? I, I don't know how any of this stuff works. I've never kidnapped someone before. If only we had a local. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, Where do you go for shady dealings? For shady dealings. Yeah, Wesley. <laughs> right. Where's the black market? Shifty eyes. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, I have well, worse to sell. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> so there is the Greenest Inn, which is the respectable place. And then there was the less respectable um, bar B. The Ramblin' Acorn. It's the Ramblin' Acorn. Well, the the place where shady people who usually came through and spent their time was probably the, the Shady Acorn. The Ramblin', the Ramblin Acorn. <laughs> I mean, Known to I've, I've heard it both ways. <laughs> <laughs> it's, Sorry. It's got a reputation and a Col nickname. Colloquially, we call it the Shady Acorn because of how shady the people there are. <laughs> yeah. So the uh, Ramblin' Acorn Inn, also known as the Shady Acorn Inn, to locals. You guys walk in. It's on the uh, northwestern uh, side. Okay. Uh, well, middle northwestern. So your Celestine can still see you guys. Okay. You you walk in and there are just beds and like pillows and like this place does not look like a shady place anymore. I mean the floor's still pretty terrible mm -hmm. and it smells Everyone's like really gotta pull stale their part beer. to help the town, including yeah. the shady people. <laughs> including the sh shady people need need a place to sleep too. They're shady, not evil. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So you no do judgment. see, so you do see some people sleeping on the floor. You see um, a couple people behind the bar who's just handing out water. It looks it looks rougher than normal, mm. <laughs> for a totally different reason. Okay, um, and there's no one in here that looks to be out of place or not doing something like. What everyone else is doing, kind of thing. Like, I'm assuming there's a lot of people who are, well, everyone like, really taking looks the water out of place. cups or <laughs> like laying on the beds or doing something to like clean up things or crying. Uh, <laughs> both of you go ahead and make an in uh, inception check. Inception make an in check. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. 
Make an investigation check. Let's just, because let's just it follow doesn't exist, and have doesn't a mean it won't exist. How far Inception. Are you in this dream? <laughs> I'm gonna wave to the um, you know, kind of like I, but like don't like acknowledge me too much to um, <laughs> old Ned, the <laughs> bartender. <laughs> don't tell my mom you saw me in here. <laughs> <laughs> old Ned recognizes you. Nods his head and understands. <laughs> and goes back to doing what barkeeps do. Just cleaning that cup. That one glass. <laughs> With the same dirty rag? With the same dirty rag he's been using for 30 years. Yeah. So what'd you guys get? 21. Okay. Um, 13. Sorry, All right. 11. 11. So, Wesley, everyone looks out of place. Like, the town was ransacked. Yeah. Everyone should not be here. And you see, like, respectable people in here, like, shop owners. They're, and it's basically just one of the places that, mm -hmm. that was assigned to them to sleep. Yeah. Izzy, you don't necessarily see anybody who looks out of place besides everybody. You do notice that this establishment probably lives up to its shady reputation. Because you do see, like... Just very, very faintly, like light coming through a crack in the in the wall. So you think maybe there's like a secret room back there, but you don't really see anybody who looks dragon culty or ransomy or unfortunately just it's not nothing. So because I saw Wesley acknowledge the bartender, mm -hmm. did you call him by his name? I, I didn't say anything okay. to him, no. Well, I saw you, like, make a gesture at him, so I'm like, mm -hmm. okay. Approach the, the bartender, the barkeep, and say, slide over two silver pieces and say, do you know anyone in this establishment that may have information on an abducted person? Uh, you see this this human man. He's got brown hair, blue eyes. Uh, he's about six feet tall. He just kind of looks down at the silver pieces, and he slides them back to you and says, No, ma'am. All right. Thank you very much. You're welcome. And going to walk back out. I'm going to see if... Because I didn't say it very quietly, so I'm trying to see if anyone reacted to when I said that. You wait about five or ten minutes. Nobody followed. Okay. Uh, and there's no one outside? Uh, there's tons of people outside. No. I, I know, but uh, of, of the, of the uh, ransomy type, nobody really looks at you. Nobody really pays you much attention. I mean, a couple kids look at you and go, Mom, her skin's blue! But beyond that, <laughs> nothing much. Okay. So af after Izzy walks outside, uh -huh. I'm going to walk up to old Ned. Be like, hey, Ned. Um, hey, Wesley. How's so, your brothers doing? Oh, they're, they're doing great. I really appreciate that. Um, I've got a favor to ask. Yeah. Um, is that there are some people who did some really good work here last night. And that lady who just walked in here, she's got a friend who fell afoul of the dragon coal. I mean, we all did, but... Uh, it seems like he was taken by them, and she's just was trying to find him. And there, there was a ransom note that indicated that they were to meet here, not ne necessarily here, here, but like in Greenest. Have you, have you heard anything? Uh, at the mention of uh, Dragon Colt, mm -hmm. you see his hand clench the glass, and the glass breaks just a little bit. It kind of goes. Dragon cult. That's who's responsible for this. D were they not like overtly like obvious about that in their thing? They were not. Okay. Huh. I guess they weren't dancing and singing in the streets about that. Okay. I thought I dragon. It may have been one I of know, those. I'm Your singing. mileage may vary. <laughs> 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 Sometimes you ran into kobold shouting about it. Sometimes you just got mugged. That's true. <laughs> you you ended up having to. Just, so just a reminder, you found yeah. out in the mill. Uh. All of you except Wesley. Kurt was there. Um, you found out in the mill who was responsible for all okay. this. You told okay, Governor okay. Nighthill yeah. and then ended up capturing a cultist. Okay, gotcha. But who loudly and proudly proclaimed who, where he's right. from. Okay. Yeah. 
So at this point, oh yeah, yeah, that's, it's not that, public knowledge. That's give it another hour. It will be. Oh, it, <laughs> oh, it will. <laughs> now that you've told now. Ned. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, Ned, the, the these these heroes, these people who off the zone, they they captured one of the people who attacked our town, and it was the dragon cult. Those those weird people that we hear about, you know. But he sets the glass down, more like slams it down. A couple of people stir. Oh, that poor glass. And uh, this this glass is probably done for after this. Um, hairline cracked all over. Hairline cracks mm. all over the place. It's gonna be sand by the time you're done talking to him. <laughs> <laughs> and he says, "Are you telling me?" That those dragon cultists are real, Wesley. Or is this just some rumor that's going around? No, I I, I know it. I've seen it. Uh, whether I actually have or not, this is what I'm saying. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you saw them when Salaskin was fighting them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, I, I heard it from their mouths on, on the city wall. It was the dragon cult. They're responsible for the destruction of our town, for the destruction of our homes, our livelihoods. Reason why you're hosting beds here and not serving your usual brew. You know, that that good acorn swill. <laughs> I don't know if swill and good belong in the same sentence, but we'll go with it. Made of the finest shady acorns. <laughs> he uh, he kind of gives you a, a once-over puts the rag down and he says I do not stand for thugs like this and go ahead and make a uh, persuasion check with advantage good at this yay good thing I'm good at this (laughs) (laughs) Uh, 15 bring your friend back inside thanks Ned you, you've no always problem. got my back. Tell um, your tell your father I say hello, and I will be there on on Saturday for the <laughs> uh, football game that he wanted me to watch with him. <laughs> oh Can Ned be the officiator? <laughs> sure. <laughs> okay. He officiates the game. Yes. He's the ref. <laughs> sure thing, Ned. Um, and I'm gonna scoot back outside and be like, Izzy, Izzy. Um, uh, yeah, yeah. I don't see anyone out here. I don't know if anyone's coming. Is Jaden dead? Um. So I, I talked to the barkeep here. He's he's a, he's a friend of mine. Oh. Um. And that's nice. Mm-hmm. And he actually he actually gave me my first gig. Um. Believe it or not. Um, oh, you 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 do gigs? Yes, um, but that's not important. Um, <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just just come inside. He's he's uh, got something to say. Oh, okay. I follow you back in. What's your name, girl? Um, m- my name is Izzy. Uh, where are you from? I am from El Terrell. Follow me. And okay. he he looks to the other two that are behind the bar, and he says. Make sure that everyone's taken care of properly. And he uh, he opens up that where that crack in the wall was. Uh, you see him do some sort of hand signal, and the door and it it slowly opens, and he leads you inside. And inside is just like a round table, kind of like a normal like poker room, t- uh, back room where like s- secret poker games are happening. Right things like that uh there's there's quite a few chairs there's like a couch and stuff and he said he when he shuts the door he goes (laughs) all right so uh facades aside i i do run this establishment and i do have a reputation to keep (laughs) oh Uh, okay this place is known as you know the shady acorn inn For good reason, and also (laughs) not good reason. However, I will say that despite the shady dealings that potentially happen here, we do not deal with kidnappers. We do not deal with murder. 
Sometimes we deal with stolen goods, but not my cup of tea normally, and I'm not the one who handles those transactions. That makes sense. However, I know a guy who is really good at tracking people down if you need that to happen. Not for death or murder, but can find people. Okay. Yes, I would be interested in that. What's what's this person's name? His name is Jaden Prazio. He opens up a drawer and writes something down. Age? He is about 28 years old. What's he look like? So I describe Jaden. He is a human male. He's about 5 foot 11. Has dark short hair. Kind of pasty skinned because he likes to stay indoors more than outdoors. He has blue eyes. He has some ink stained fingers because he writes a lot. Think like Milo from Atlantis Lost Empire. Mm. Ah, okay. okay. Got so it. With dark hair. Got yeah, it. he's very studious. Does he have glasses? Um, I'll say he doesn't. Okay. Magic user? Uh, no. Not, not that I know of. And unfortunately, I do have to ask, if we don't find him alive, is there any identifiers on him to identify who he is? Like birthmarks? Yeah. Preferably, Tattoos. Preferably something not shiny. <laughs> <laughs> I will say he has a scar near his left eye that is in the shape of a crescent moon. Okay. Last known location? I think it was greenest because did did we decide that he was in greenest so i i think that he was on a like traveling between cities for business right you know furthering the the family business so i'll say uh last known location was on the road between elsewhere and greenest and his profession Uh, he is a Scholar slash businessman in training. A jewel merchant. He he's a. He's twenty eight and he's in training. <laughs> When's he gonna well, get started? He's had a profession change. Oh, okay. <laughs> more more like he's going to take over for his dad's business when his dad retires. Mm. Oh, so he's not going to become professional until his dad. Right, like maybe, he maybe he's, he's the assistant. Man. He is the assistant shopkeeper, and he was like going to towns to broker deals with the other vendors to gain material so that we can make the jewelry. So I wonder if Izzy's description of Jaden ends up being tinged in like how his eyes are like (laughs) blue diamonds. and (laughs) She might say something like, his eyes are a dreamy blue. I mean, they're they're blue eyes um, and he's got this really cute crescent shaped scar <laughs> in his left eye it's like oh that was a that was a really weird time but he was <laughs> he was adorable i mean um l- yeah, yeah he's scar. about five foot eleven and, <laughs> and has a scar <laughs> but keep it at that <laughs> well this should be enough to go on i will i will find a way to keep in touch with wesley if that's all right is he staying with you are you guys um it is now <laughs> i i think so i think there's something else that we need to do all right well i will get on that thank you and he folds the letter he goes over to a a candle and he he picks up a match and lights it lights the candle and then burns the paper hmm. um, into the candle um, Sir, is that? Uh, I, I oh, thought you were uh, taking that. Oh, oh, okay. And as as you're saying that, it turns uh, the the candle actually turns purple, and the paper <laughs> disappears. That's neat. Um, I will. <laughs> I approve. It's part of the theatrics. I, I think that's he, he magic. He just has a really good memory, but he wants people to think I, it's I'm gonna, cool. I'm gonna lean over to Ash to um Izzy and be like, "Yep, that's magic." Okay, <laughs> that's cool. I don't see it a whole lot in my life. I'm more of a jewelry person. <laughs> All right. If you think of anything else, just let me know 
Let me know, kid. And uh, I will try and keep in touch any way possible. Thank you. I Let me know. Uh, do I need to compensate you or this tracker? Uh, I owe his family a, a favor. We'll call this a favor. Thank you. Thank you, Ned. You're welcome. Now, get out of my establishment before I have to kick you out. Yes, sir. And I give him a little salute and <laughs> run out. Celestine, you help a lot of people find temporary residents. Um, Izzy and Wesley, you don't... You stay for two or three hours. Nobody looks to be looking for money. You don't really even know what you're looking for. Right. That the ransom help. note is just super vague. I, I wonder Darn it, if... Jaden. Why can you have left like a clue if you wrote it yourself? I, I feel like that's really poor timing on the the kidnappers. I mean, did they know that the this whole thing was going down like last night? I, I don't even know. Maybe it was... Mm. I'll bet Usarker has a theory on it. <laughs> Usarker has a theory on everything. <laughs> <laughs> so, Usarker, you get your long rest. <sighs> you suck. <laughs> I wake up refreshed and ready as the sun sinks below the horizon. It's probably, <laughs> it's probably, it's probably, it's probably like er, late morning at like this three point. Thir- 2 or 3.30 right, in the afternoon. Right, yeah. Well, I mean, if we if we went till whenever, yeah, it's, it's like yeah, 12. Yeah, 6 o'clock plus 8 11, hours is so. 2 p.m. Yeah. So I get up, and I'm going to go and find Governor Nighthill. All right. Usarker, you, you walk into the keep. You find him. He's still in the keep. He has not slept at all. They've moved a table out into the middle, and he is surrounded by what looked to be t- uh, three generals and a, a couple like colonels. You can tell on their insignia. And um, these are all from the town guard. These are from the town guard, yes. And he has like a map out, and it looks to be a map of the area. And you you hear him talking about mobilizing and sending a small group. And at that point, that's that's all you hear when you walk up. We need we need to send a small group out. Maybe we can uh, we can uh, track them. And he kind of rubs his eyes. Oh, ooh, ooh, Sarker, uh, you're back, Lord Nighthill. Seems like things are going well. Are you about to die on your feet? Uh, feels like it. Feels like it. Uh, what can I What can I do for you? Well, I've just returned from finally having some rest this night. I look over at one of, you know, the other generals or people and say, make sure this man gets some sleep sometime. Doctor's orders. They nod. In the mean- and they all look exhausted as well. Mm-hmm. As much as it was, does him g- good to be heroic, if he passes out and remains unconscious for two days, he'll be of no use to anyone. So... Are we looking towards retribution? Are we looking towards collecting allies to deal with this army? Are we looking towards asking for aid from one of the other cities? He he looks at the map and he says, "At the moment, I just I just want to know who actually is behind this. If if Mondoth wasn't behind it, she's taking orders from someone. Who is in charge of this?" And <sighs> he he kind of leans back. He says, "But we do need help. We need we need help from a bigger city." Then let me offer you guidance. I have some knowledge of the inner workings of libraries and halls of knowledge, where things like historical leaders of large and influential cults of the Sword Coast are like to be kept. If I were to find information, I would go somewhere where information flows, perhaps to one of the largest cities around here, perhaps to El Torel, although if you're looking for the best library, that'd be Candlekeep. That perhaps is a little far off, though. Still, I would suggest El Torel again, because you don't have too much in the way of protection out here, and that cult is obviously planning more things. At the very minimum, somewhere with an actual military power needs to know. 
at the maximum, perhaps something can be raised to deal with them. And so I've been thinking about it, and my consideration which I put before you, good lord, is that you send a delegation to El Terrell in order to request aid, and they can perhaps find who is behind this for you by searching through their knowledge and perusing the networks they have, as well as preparing relief aid for the city and possibly military force in order to hunt down this army. He sits back and thinks about it for a moment, and he says, I think you're right. First, I would ask Burdusk. Burdusk is closer. Uh, It's not quite as far out. Burdusk would be our closest ally. It's about four and a half days away. I need to send someone. You're right. I I need to send someone there. We don't... We're such a small town. We don't really have dignitaries who can do this sort of thing. I don't... What about that young lad? He seemed eager to prove himself and uh, perhaps a bit explosive. But he seemed like he had a good head on his shoulders and possibly away with words. Um, What was his name? Wesley? Wesley? Yes, Uh, I think that was it. Yeah, the the kid. Um, Give me a day and I'll think about it. Uh, Are you guys heading up to El Toro? Are you going the way of Burdusk? I haven't had a chance to communicate with other people. And as far as you guys, we kind of met up in the middle of a violent attack. I am set on pursuing this cult, although it's an army. And armies are best dealt with by other armies, as opposed to lone swordsmen. So I am looking at options, but I am committed to this. my lord and so I'm willing to help and assist I know that they are grieving some of their own dead the people who were with me I believe I heard that they said something about being from El Terrell I'm not sure on all the details I think I may have heard Baldur's Gate as well maybe I I'm sorry I don't remember (laughs) that's alright I don't expect you to you didn't spend enough time talking with them Yes, I will leave you to it then and await your decision. In the meantime, if there's anything that I can assist you with, let me know. I'm going to nod to him and to the other command uh, assembled militia and leave. Where where are you from, sir? Baldur's Gate. Baldur's Gate. A, a, a nice 500 miles from here, more or less. Do you have connections in Baldur's Gate? None that would be valuable to you unless you like libraries. Okay. Give me, give me some time and all. Or students of physiognomy. What? I may have said it wrong. Yeah, I, I know you're not from our town, but <laughs> I, I, and the generals kind of look at him, and they're, and one of them speaks up and says, "I think what he's trying to say is that we need your help. Uh, we know you're not from this town, but if you can get." A few people to um, help us maybe go to Burdusk and get some representation on behalf of us. We will give you whatever you need and we will, um, we know you had a fallen comrade. I know that's on the way. Uh, We can give you horses. We can give you a carriage, anything that you need. Horses. (laughs) We will have to discuss that, of course, among the those who are assembled for it. Would you be willing to do that for us? And Governor Nighthill is, he just nods. This poor guy looks so beat up. He's so hashed. <laughs> poor guy. Between he's the mother-in-law and all of this. His he's clothes are ripped. He's got wounds all over him still from when he got hit by the dragon attack. Oh, yeah. So, I mean, he's just a mess. Yes, I can talk to them and see if they'd be willing to assist in that. Thank you, sir. In the meantime, get to bed. Surely you don't have to be involved specifically in all of this and can get at least an hour or two of sleep. Yeah, I, you're you're right. He looks at you and just kind of weakly salutes. I I think I'll take you up on that offer. Um, send out send out the group to follow them. See see what we can find. And I'm gonna go take a nap. Good afternoon. I say, and I leave. All right. 
you guys manage to meet up at the end of the day. I assume you find each other. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Izzy is just dragging. She is so tired. And she's also really disappointed at not being able to get any more clues as to Jaden's whereabouts. Yeah. yeah. That's unfortunate. Do we all meet up at the inn? I think that's a reasonable sure. place. Yep. The inn or in one of the few scanning go. buildings, I imagine. Let's we, go to the jam jar. <laughs> I mean, that's where he's staying, right? That's where our sorcerer's staying. Yes. My family, certainly. Yep. So we can be with, at Pillow Fort and you can be at Jam Jerry. Jam jars? <laughs> jam, jam jars. jars. Jam jars. <laughs> Pillow Fort. Pillow Fort. <laughs> Pillow Fort. Pillow <laughs> Fort. So as you as you guys meet up, Gusarker, do you tell him about what you talked about yes. with uh, Governor? I'm going to go through in detail with them and explain the governor's desires. He seems intent on sending scouts, but of course this town lacks anything in the way of scouting professionals or people who can handle themselves in extreme wilderness, being mostly farmers. Yeah. There, there's a handful of wilderness folk who, wilderness you know, tractors and things who come through here, um, but not many right now. Sadly, I think our greatest expert in that is no longer with us. We recently had a man named Kurt who could likely have handled himself in that kind of work. Well, that's what he looked like, yeah. Mm. Speaking of which, <laughs> have you been haunted again recently? Um, not not by him, <laughs> no. Not by him. <laughs> <laughs> You're a strange man. In good company, it appears. Um, uh-huh. <laughs> but oh, vampiric one! <laughs> <laughs> I, I I don't know if you were you were aware of um, Izzy's quest to uh, um, find her friend um, Jaden, but we we made some progress on that. I don't know that I heard this, Isidore. Who is Jaden? Jaden is Kurt's cousin. And my friend, he's the son of uh, Master Prazio, who is the master artisan in my apprenticeship. And what does he have to do with all of this connection? He was abducted, apparently, by dragon cultists. Oh, is he the one who wrote his own ransom note? Yes, the one that you mentioned as I was reading it and very confused. But I, I know somebody here in town who has connections with somebody who might be able to track Jaden down. Uh, we, we made contact with um, my friend, and he gave Jaden's uh, description out. Um, so we, we may receive communique uh, in the future about that. Okay. All right. But in the meantime, it'll take a bit of time, probably. So... I, I I am committed to hunting this cult. It is of interest to me. It, it sounds like almost all of us have, have some sort of connection to this and some reason for going after them. And um, so I was interested in forming a more permanent acquaintanceship with the lot of you. Oh, you're not sick of me yet? Not yet, Isidore. <laughs> <laughs> Your marksmanship has been remarkable. Oh, thanks. <laughs> There is a town, by the way, by the way, north uh, called Bear Dusk. Have you all heard of it? Yeah, I I, I mm-hmm. played a couple gigs there. Bear Dusk is an ally of Greenest, apparently, and the the town elders, generals, and the like, however they prefer to be referred to, believe that they can request and su- aid and support. Bear Dusk is on the way to Elturel. I understand that. We have a body that wishes to make its way back home. Well, the body doesn't wish it, but... It doesn't? I don't know. I've been hearing an awful lot from (laughs) this body recently. He didn't say anything about that. Um, He did encourage me that I need to pursue my quest uh, in retrieving the artifact. You Um, mean that thing? Yeah, that thing. That (laughs) thing that's so incredibly important to my family. Um... 
the fang with an f this is the fang that has Mm -hmm. the vague rumors and prophecies of doom on the the behalf of anybody who doesn't keep it safe yeah okay so how about this rather than charging headlong into a military camp you instead go the opposite direction of that garner allies among bear dusk receive possibly military aid from them and the surrounding region and then be properly equipped to handle a horde of cultists. That sounds like a great idea. I know it may not be the most direct or heroic thing, but no one's ever accused me of being especially heroic. Well, except for a small child named Timmy. <laughs> Timmy or Kyle? Kyle. Kyle. Is it Kyle? Kyle. It's Kyle. Kyle. Kyle it was, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I've been avoiding. <laughs> All throughout the day, all three of you have seen like the kid going, "Where's the vampire? Where's the vampire?" <laughs> oh, like, it was what? so tempting. Vampire? It was so tempting to tell him <laughs> where uh, Usarker was hiding. <laughs> He's also got like a gaggle of other children following <laughs> him around you trying be to find the vampire. That Celestine didn't tell on you. <laughs> <laughs> there are probably some really concerned citizens. Like, there's a vampire out there. We already dealt with raiders last night and now <laughs> there's a vampire a vampire in town <laughs> so that being said that's it i'm moving to sparta <laughs> mrs celestine i have not yet heard from you specifically um i believe i have wesley and isidore on board with this mm-hmm. but i don't know what, what you intend i have a chapter that's just outside of or, um, between el Torel and the other Yes, that. Um, And so I would like to give them word as well. And so I need to travel in that direction. I'm also very concerned about um, what this cult is doing. This seems to be a far more coordinated attack than just a tiny band of... Yeah, whatever they are. Raiders. Raiders. They are certainly not tiny. Yeah, Mm. definitely not tiny, definitely not medium, definitely not large. A little larger than large, possibly. And they and seem with intent on collecting gold and other wealth. Yeah, and, and Wesley, and, and Wesley, you do know because your father said so that this mm-hmm. uh, Green Nest was not the only town attacked that night. Okay. Oh, you don't know right. how many other towns, but you do know this I was forgot. not the only one. Oh, well, okay. did Wesley tell us that? Yes, that's true. Yeah. Okay. So, Whether I did or not, Wesley did. Okay. <laughs> it came up. So um, Wesley told us as we were having our short rest. Yeah. <laughs> Celestine feels the need, strong need, to um, look more into this. Because she doesn't want Baldur's Gate to get hit next. And she definitely doesn't want the small town where... Um, I think most of her kids actually live in Baldur's Gate. But still, like if you ever leave Baldur's Gate and go to any of the surrounding towns... They could get hit by this dragon cult because they're going everywhere, apparently. So she is going to look more into it. And she's, even though she was due a break, we're going to look into it. As an additional, possibly worthy of reward from Governor Nighthill, he has said that he wants to know who is in charge of this cult and who is commanding these operations. Since it was not fondue nor was it Lenny, <laughs> nor was it whoever that dragon-headed thing was. Fondue. <laughs> Madam the face? That one, yes. Mm. Uh, yeah, that would be good to find out. That one may take a little bit more investigation in looking into that cave system over in the south. I haven't yeah. I haven't heard of the library at Bear Dusk and don't know how good it is but I may spend some time there and see if they have any old records of cult leaders and the like. Do they write that stuff down? Of course they do. Celestine will trust you on this one. <laughs> In the Sword Coast, cult leaders often make quite the uh, splash. It pays to write them down, especially when they may not be as dead as they claim to be 2,000 years later. <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> As you guys make your way to the jam jars and the pillow forts, you can separate as you so choose or stick together, whichever you decide. Mm -hmm. And as you guys lay your weary heads down for the night, leave. You all level up to level three. Yay! Yay. I was afraid you were going to like spring something on us. I was like, no, (laughs) I don't want exhaustion.
Thanks, everyone, for listening to this episode of Power Word Crit. Be sure to stay tuned for more adventure on PowerWordCrit.com or find us on your favorite podcast streaming site. And now, one of our PSs. Yeah. I don't even know what your dad's name is. Um, <laughs> your dad's name? <laughs> <laughs> we, only, we only call him father. <laughs> um. <laughs> Quick name him. <laughs> don't name him a jam or a jelly. <laughs> <laughs> the McElroy brothers are not experts. <laughs> Sorry. That <laughs> was the wrong button. Well, it's a podcast that a podcast, right? Podcast. Sorry. 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 No, copyright. Yes. Copyright. <laughs> so we are advertising for the McElroys. Yeah, I'm listening to my brother and br- my brother and me. <laughs> it's a mess. Like, oh, that's really... fine. We, we there, approach some... and look at the side. Like, that definitely doesn't say shady <laughs> acorn. <laughs> you walk in and everybody's super shady. Everybody no. is. No, is... they're wearing shades. <laughs> oh, yeah. They're all wearing shades. Well, they're they're all loners in a corner. <laughs> <laughs> I'll wear my sunglasses. There probably aren't in the day. too many. Like, How did I wind up in the greenest inn when this was available? <laughs> <laughs> it's it's not well reputable. advertised. <laughs> you, you didn't well, want well advertised to tourists, maybe. Right. Yeah. You didn't you want dirt people. and you didn't want fleas. <laughs> probably true, actually. <laughs>